Welcome to a lesson on basic implicit differentiation. In order to understand implicit differentiation, we must have a good understanding of the chain rule. So let's first review the chain rule by determining the derivative of the quantity 4x squared plus x raised to the third with respect to x. Notice how we have a composite function here, and therefore we must apply the chain rule to find the derivative. Looking at our notes below, here we have the basic power rule of differentiation, and here we have the extended power rule of differentiation, where u is the inner function. So notice for our derivative, the inner function u is equal to the quantity 4x squared plus x, and therefore u prime, which is the same as the u dx, equals the derivative of 4x squared plus x with respect to x, which is 8x plus 1. So if we wanted to, we could rewrite this as the derivative with respect to x of u to the third, which is equal to three u squared times u prime, or three u squared times the u dx, which in this case is equal to three times the quantity four x squared plus x squared times the quantity eight x plus one. This is the same idea we need to apply when performing implicit differentiation and the term uses a variable different than the input variable. For example, here, we're asked to find the derivative of y cubed with respect to x, where the term is a y term and the input variable is x, and therefore, we need to apply the chain rule in order to find this derivative, because we're assuming y is a function of x. So to show some extra work here, if we wanted to, we could let u be equal to y, and therefore, y prime, which remember is equal to du dx, is really the derivative of y with respect to x, which is dy dx, often just written as y prime. Just as in this first example, we could rewrite this as the derivative of u cubed with respect to x, which we already know is equal to three u squared times u prime, but here, three u squared times u prime is equal to three y squared times y prime, or three y squared times dy dx. We often use dy dx instead of y prime, just because y prime is easily confused with y to the first. We normally won't show this much work though, when a term is given using a variable different than the input variable, we differentiate like we normally do, and then we have an extra factor of the derivative. Notice how this is really just the derivative of y cubed with respect to y times dy dx. Next we have the derivative of two t to the fifth with respect to t. Notice in this derivative, the term is a t term, and the input variable is also t, and therefore the chain rule is not required with different j as we normally do. So the derivative of two t to the fifth with respect to t is just 10 t to the fourth. But I do want to point out that if we did to apply the chain rule, it would not affect the derivative. For example, if we did let u be equal to t, u prime is really just the u dt, and the derivative of t with respect to t is just one. So multiplying by one, of course, would not change the derivative. Next, we have the derivative of two s to the fifth with respect to t. Notice how here, though, we have an s term, and the input variable is t, and therefore we need to apply the chain rule where we're assuming s is a function of t. So this derivative is equal to the derivative of two s to the fifth with respect to s times ds dt. Well, the derivative of two s to the fifth would be 10 s to the fourth, and then we have times ds dt. Again, we must apply the chain rule because we're assuming s is a function of t. So if we did let u equal s, u prime would be equal to ds dt. Now that we understand if we're given a term that uses a variable different than the input variable, we must apply the chain rule. Let's go over the formal rules on how to perform implicit differentiation. For these notes, we're assuming we're given an equation that uses the variables x and y, where x is the input variable and y is the output variable. So step one would differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x. Step two, we apply the rules of differentiation as necessary. Anytime an expression involving y is differentiated, 
dy dx will be a factor in the result, again because of the chain rule. Step two, we isolate the dy dx terms on one side of the equation. Step four, if there's more than one dy dx term, we factor out the dy dx. And finally, step five, we divide both sides of the equation to isolate dy dx. And let's look at one example before we go. We're asked to differentiate with respect to x. So the first step is we differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x. Now focusing on the left side, we know the input variable is x, and because this is a y term and so is this, when we differentiate these terms, we'll have an extra factor of dy dx, and notice how these two terms are x terms, and therefore we do not have an extra factor of dy dx. So the derivative of y cubed with respect to x is three y squared times dy dx, plus the derivative of five y with respect to x is five times dy dx, minus the derivative of two x to the fourth with respect to x would be eight x cubed, minus the derivative of x with respect to x is one, equals the derivative of 12 with respect to x is zero. The next step is to isolate the dy dx terms. So we add eight x cubed and add one to both sides, which gives us this equation. Notice how we have two dy dx terms on the left side. So now we factor out dy dx from those two terms, giving us dy dx times the quantity three y squared plus five on the left. And our last step, is to divide in order to solve for dy dx, which gives us our derivative. I hope you found this helpful.